Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at some basic ways we can create looping animations. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so I have a Cinema 4D file open here. Uh, I am in the animate layout uh, as we will be working with some keyframes a bit later on. So make sure you're in that as well. And we're going to just start with something really, really simple like a cube. Okay, now this may seem pretty basic, but what we're going to do here is just animate this uh, rotating. Okay, so I'm going to go to my coordinate tab, make sure I'm on frame zero. All right, and just keyframe my heading rotation. Okay, go to frame 90, type in 360 degrees, keyframe that, and now I've created a basic looping animation. Now, even though this technically loops, it doesn't look continuous because when we keyframe properties in Cinema 4D, we get a slow in and slow out automatically applied. So we typically want to remove this uh, for looping animations that we want the movement to be uh, more continuous. So that's where we come into our timeline. We want to make sure we're in F curve mode and expand the cube, click on rotation so we can see that property. And now we can see that slow out and slow in. So all we need to do is select both of these keyframes and we can do that by holding shift. Let's switch our interpolation mode here to linear. And now what we should see is we get nice continuous movement. Okay, and we could do this for as many properties as we want. All right, so for instance, I could do the same with my other rotation properties, my pitch and bank. So on frame zero, I'm going to keyframe those, go to frame 90, put in 360 degrees for these as well, make sure to keyframe them. And now I have something even more crazy. Okay, so let's take this a step further and try and use a cloner uh, to create some looping animation as well. All right, so I have my cube. I'm going to create a cloner, put my cube in the cloner, and what do you know? We have our cubes. All right, now if we hit play, you'll notice we don't get any animation. Uh, and that's because of this property here, reset coordinates. Okay, so if we uncheck this, now we'll see we have our movement and all of our cubes are animating. Okay, now keep in mind with the cloner, we do have different modes here. So I could also maybe do this in a radial pattern. And I'll definitely want to increase the radius for that as well as the count. Okay, and hopefully you can see how we can create some really interesting animations uh, pretty quickly and easily here. All right, using you know radial mode or perhaps one of our other modes like honeycomb array. All right, so now <clears throat> we're gonna take this a step further and instead of working with just keyframes, we're gonna start working with effectors. Now really the, the key thing here is the noise texture. Uh, anywhere we can put the noise texture, um, whether it's in uh, an effector, a deformer, even a material, okay, or material property like color or luminance, um, we're going to be able to get looping animation very easily as, as you will see. So let's go ahead and dive back in. All right. So I am going to get rid of the animation on my cube here. So I'll go to the coordinate tab. Make sure I right click on any one of these three R's and that'll select all my rotation properties. So I can go to animation and delete track. And I'll just go ahead and zero these out. Really what we're gonna be creating is just kind of a, a grid of cubes here. So I'm gonna click back on the cloner, go back to the object tab, set my mode to grid array. And that's gonna give me a nice start but I do want to increase the count a bit. So maybe something like 15 by 15. 
Okay, so now we have our nice grid of cubes here. We want to go ahead and add an effector. So I have my cloner selected. I'm gonna come up here to my MoGraph objects and choose the shader effector. Now the shader effector is gonna allow us to use any Cinema 4D texture, an image, or even another animation uh, and have that drive the position, scale, rotation, or color of our clones here, okay? So we're just gonna be using a noise texture. And by having the cloner selected, it automatically applied the shader effector to the cloner, but we can just double check that by selecting the cloner, going to the effectors tab and making sure our shader effector is in here. If it isn't, just drag and drop it into the effector list here. So in the shader effector, okay, um, we're gonna uncheck scale. We're gonna turn on position and just give this some value on the y position maybe like 100 centimeters okay the real magic comes in the shading tab where this is where we can load in that noise texture so if we click on this down arrow we can choose noise all right you can already see how it's applying that noise texture to our grid here uh, and changing the y position of all these cubes to animate this though, we need to go into the noise texture itself. And this is the key right here, the loop period. So this is in seconds. So it does matter what frame rate you're using. I'm currently using 30 frames per second. So uh, 90 frames here, roughly 90 frames is gonna be three seconds. Now we also need to give this some speed. So maybe I'll just type in one. And now I should get some looping animation. All right, I wanna point out zero to 90 is actually 91 frames. Uh, and while we really can't tell with this movement, I am gonna just set my preview range here to 89 so that I do get an even three seconds. Now, we can certainly make this a little bit more obvious if it's looping or not. Uh, by increasing the strength or the amount of movement we're getting on the y-axis. So I can go back to my shader effector, go to the parameter tab, and just increase this until I get the amount of movement I'm looking for. Okay, so a little bit more obvious that it's looping now, not seeing any jumping from when it stops on frame 89 and starts over again at, again at frame one. Now I wanna point out that in the shading tab here and in our noise, we do have some other things we can work with here that are important. So we also have several different noise patterns and while you can see them listed here, you can also get previews of them by clicking on this little um, arrow here. And you'll notice this noise pattern doesn't have a lot of contrast uh, or detail. Uh, now we could certainly you know, improve that a bit by working with some of these other properties but some of these have that already. So, you know, Luca, for instance, uh, gives us a much faster, more dramatic movement. So, you know, I could tone down the animation speed if I wanted to keep this uh, or, or adjust the amount of movement as well. So these noise patterns really do give us different animation. So it's definitely worth experimenting with them, all right? So I'm just gonna go with the, the box, all right? And another important property I like to point out is scale. So scale is gonna work on the size of our noise pattern, and so a smaller scale means the movement from one clone to the next is gonna be very different, all right? Very much what we're seeing here. A larger scale, something like a 1,000%, okay, should start to give us something a little bit more smooth or even. So that isn't quite as much as I was looking for, so let's try something even larger. There we go. All right, so now the movement from one clone to the next isn't nearly as much, and that's because the noise pattern is larger, so the values from one clone to the next are much closer together. Instead of being, you know, one clone having a value of black and the next one having white, uh, they're both gonna have, you know, different 
shades of gray that are really, really close together. Okay, so that's a look at our noise. All right, and as I said, anywhere we can load this noise texture in, we're gonna have access to uh, this loop period property. So, you know, that's the shader effector. Um, we're gonna also take a look at it in the displacer here as well. So, you know, that's really kind of the key. So let's get rid of both of these. And what I'm gonna do is create a plane. All right, this guy's pretty small, okay. And what we can do is create a displacer deformer and make this a child of the plane. Now the displacer works very similarly to the shader effector. It allows us to load in a texture and um, change our geometry uh, based on, you know, in this case, the noise texture. Uh, so we'll still have access to that loop period property, the animation speed. So it works very similarly. Uh, but we can get different results because we're working directly on geometry as opposed to uh, clones, okay? So I'll click on this drop down, choose my noise, All right? We can already see it doing a little something. I'm gonna go into the object tab and that's where I will increase the height, okay? Now the direction it is um, working on is controlled right here and right now it's working on the vertex normal but we could also do spherical or planar depending on what shape or direction we want okay so I have my noise loaded in we're gonna go in here and once again you know set the animation speed to one the loop period to three and hit play and now I have my animation again. Something I wanna point out, the popping here is being caused by our Fong tag. As Cinema 4D tries to smooth across our different um, polygons here. So if I delete that, I'm not gonna get that popping, but I'm gonna get a very faceted look, All right? If I just turn off my lines here, notice how that's very faceted. Without the noise, you can see some, or I'm sorry, without the Fong tag, or with the Fong tag, some of these polygons are smoothed, others are not, and it's just gonna pop and change, you know, as our animation plays. So something to keep an eye on, all right? What's great about the displacer, we can apply it to any object, okay? Any piece of geometry. So if I don't wanna use a plane, I could create a sphere, okay? So take my sphere, Maybe, maybe duplicate this displacer by holding control. All right, we can see it's now animated on that. A very easy way to smooth out either the plane or the sphere here is to put it inside a subdivision surface. So if I create that subdivision surface, put my sphere inside, you'll now see it's much smoother. Okay, and I could do the same for the plane as well. All right. One last uh, deformer I just want to briefly talk about as it does start to get a little bit more advanced, uh, but it, it works right out of the box uh, when it comes to looping is the formula effector. Okay, so I'm going to delete my displacer, come back to my deformers and choose the formula effector. All right, make that a child of my sphere. And I don't have to do anything and I'm going to get uh, some looping animation. Now what's really going on here is the, the movement, the animation or deformation is being controlled by this formula. Um, I'm not gonna pretend like I completely, you know, understand this and know how to make adjustments to it, uh, but it is something you could dive into and get more familiar with if you really wanted to modify this. Uh, the help file can also be a good uh, reference for this. So if you right click, do show help, all right. You should, should see the help file where it will go in and explain um, a lot of these different properties as well as, uh, where did it go? There was a list of all the um, formulas you could use right here. Okay, so 
These are all the different operators or functions, whatever you would want to put in your formula. Uh, as I said, a little bit over my head, it's been a long time since I've had uh, my math classes, uh, but if it's something you're comfortable with and familiar with, definitely something to look into more, okay? So that's a quick look at getting things to loop. Uh, note that you know these properties that we animated apply to other objects as well. So you know when we originally animated the cube rotating, that could easily apply to a camera, okay? So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care.